What is up, you guys? It's your girl Kayla, and we are back with yet another video. You already know if you are new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome. I appreciate every single one of you guys that tune into my videos each week. So, before we get into this video, because y'all already know if you've been watching my previous videos and you see this title, you know what we're going to talk about today. But before we get into this, if you have not already subscribed yet, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you are notified each week when I upload. I upload every Sunday. Try to do it by noon, but sometimes it's more like two or three lately. Um, but we do upload every Sunday. So go ahead and do that. And now, without further ado, since you guys already know, yes, we are talking about my IUI. And I have my cryo tank here with me because I am returning it today. And I just kind of want to go through and explain to you guys how I did my IUI, what happened, what it was like. And then in my next video, because I don't want this to be too, too long for you guys, I'll go over just kind of like a lot more of the behind the scenes, what went wrong, things that I've learned, you know, things to avoid. Um, so that when it comes time for you to pick up your sperm, you have that information so you don't hopefully you don't go through what i did so because i'm doing an home iui i have a couple of choices i could either have my midwife do my iui for me or i could do it myself because i was feeling rather insecure about doing it myself just as a single parent it's something that i'm still wrestling with I figured I'd feel less alone if I just did it myself versus my midwife coming in. I know it probably sounds weird, but for me, it just seems like, even though it's such a huge event, um, I don't know, I just felt like it would be better. And for me, it actually ended up being better. Um, I was able to FaceTime two of my friends like leading up to me doing my IUI and like text them and voice chat with them uh, while I was doing it. And it really helped me feel like less alone and just like more confident and like comfortable. And I was kind of like getting emotional because I was like, oh crap, like we're doing this. So anywho, that was very helpful. Like I said, this is your journey. We may not have a lot of things that we can control, but sometimes it's just the smallest things that really helps and that really makes it special and still makes us feel like we have some sort of control over the situation. So for me, you know, having my friends Aaliyah and Shayna on the phone with me really made like that huge difference. Um, so yeah, shout out to them and then also like telling my family, like I text them after it happened um, and a couple of people before it happened that um, have been praying for me. So we did that. But that's that. Um, I will say it was a lot easier to do the than I thought it would be. There are some things to know, but it was a lot easier to do. I will put the steps that they gave me down in the description box below in case you are doing a home insemination. Um, of course, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm not a medical professional uh, that deals with fertility or reproduction, you know, reproductive um, organs or anything like that. I don't, I don't deal with any of that. Um, but they did give me the form on how to do a home insemination at my sperm bank when I'm going to go pick up my cryo tank. So I have no issues with just copy and pasting that for you guys. So if you're like me, you're kind of curious what the steps are like when you pick up your tank in person, what everything's going to look like and what's going on. So for me, I wanted to know what the tank looked like because I've seen so many different ones and can't really find like, I did not see one like this one that I have. So I'm going to show you. It's a little heavy, little being an understatement. I have the tank um, turned away just because my sperm bank is on the front of it. But this is the tank. It comes up to my knee. Um, I'm six feet tall. 
So that kind of gives you an idea of in terms of money, you know, how small this really is. And to kind of show you the structure of it, unfortunately, I can't zoom out without you guys not really being able to hear me that well. Um, this little piece up here comes with a zip tie so that this lid can't come off easily. Um, so this lid, it's kind of bubbling up now, but it, when you lift it up, you want to make sure you have gloves on when you're doing this, by the way. When you lift it up, you see the dry ice. There's more dry ice inside to keep your sperm vials safe. There we go. Um, and then you'll have this little stick right here. This stick um, has a chamber that it's attached to. And that chamber has um, basically like a longer stick that's separate from it that has little spines on it that holds your um, sperm vials on there. And it can hold several sperm vials. Because I do not have my thermal resistant glove with me right now, I'm not going to pull that out um, just because it still has dry ice on it. So I don't want to injure myself. But there. <laughs> There is that. Um, you want to be very, very careful when you pull this out. Um, so you don't touch the dry ice, so you don't spill anything. Not that you really can spill too much, but you just want to make sure that you're being very, very careful. When I pulled out this spinal part, it looks like a metal ruler. You know, it's like the length of a ruler. And it just has these divots coming out of it where your sperm vial sits. And so this is my sperm vial. If this, you know, yeah. So I don't have, um, I had the label turned away. Uh, just so you guys don't see my sperm donors, like personal information or anything like that. But inside that, you'll find your sperm vial. You want to double check your paperwork and make sure that the sperm vial, you know, the donor's identification and everything matches up with what you purchased and your paperwork. So since I'm picking up mine in person, uh, my doctor, he was able to show me that it was in fact the correct vial and all that other wonderful stuff. And then he also walked me through some things. Um, one thing that I did not know, my uh, midwife said that I could either get an IUI or an ICI vial. And because she was doing she was originally going to be the one doing the IUI. It did not matter. But once I got there, uh, they did ask me if I was doing an IUI or an ICI vial because it was a home insemination. IUI vials are safe for practitioners. Now, they did allow me to do the IUI vial still. It really didn't make a difference at the end of the day. Um, but they make sure that I had the proper syringe. The ICI vial for my sperm um, sperm bank comes with the vials. It comes with the tank. So that is really great news. Uh, and also mine, they're just really, really sweet. So because the IUI vials don't typically come with the necessary syringe, they do allow you to purchase them. And they're only like five or ten bucks. But... <laughs> Uh, they also really don't care about the five or ten bucks, so they just gave it to me for free. They're like, here you go, this is how you do it, this is what you do, all that other great stuff. And yeah, if you know anything about um, giving people shots of any kind where you're having to pull the um, whatever it is you're administering to a patient um, out of a vial, then you know exactly what to do to pull the sperm out of here. What you want to do is let this thaw for 15 to 20 minutes out in room temperature. After the 15 or 20 minutes, once you see that it's nice and you know liquidy, you can see that it's moving and whatnot, you want to stick it underneath your armpit for an additional three to five minutes until it comes to body heat. Once you do that, I, because I used to be a medical assistant, I like to prepare my syringes and everything else first before I even take this out of the cryo tank. So what I did, because I threw it away, um, what I did is I took the syringe and I opened it very carefully. And because these are typically like vacuum 
feels in a way that's the best way I can really describe it. Um, you do want to pop it basically and what you're just going to do is you're going to take the plunger of the syringe and you're going to pull it back and forth and back and forth but you want to make sure that you don't pull the plunger completely out but you do want to pull it you know until that whole chamber is full of air and then push it back out because what you don't want it to do is be stuck where it's still vacuum sealed in a way um, I can't remember the technical term for it, but basically, you know, that vacuum is still in it. Um, last thing you really want to do is not pop it correctly or pop it all the way. And you're trying to, you know, pull the sperm in. And because there's that pressure, it wants to close back up. The plunger doesn't want to come out like it needs to, to, you know, pull in the semen or any kind of fluid, really. And as it should, you don't want that to shoot back out you know, that pressure is going to want to come and enforce itself and you don't want your specimen to shoot back out. So make sure that you do that. Make sure it's all nice and good. Once you completely unlock it, you see that you pull the end of the plunger all the way to the end of the syringe or the barrel. Um, push it all the way back so it's just normal. It's kind of like if you think of a tampon. It's very much like a tampon. Um, when you see the tampon, uh, you have that plunger that's all the way out. It's not outside of the barrel that's holding the tampon itself, but it's all the way out. You want to make sure that you have pulled your plunger on your syringe all the way out like that. Um, and then before you go to get, collect your semen, push it all the way in. Just like when you would in your, um, apply the tampon, you want that to be all the way in and touching the hilt or the barrel whatever you want to call it. Um, hopefully that's not confusing you. Please let me know in the comments if it is, and I will try to put it in better words. Uh, but you want to do that. And so because of the way these are, I can't show you quite the shape of the bottom, but it is rounded. It comes to a rounded point, uh, kind of like a little pool. So what I did is I put it all the way, I put the syringe all the way to the bottom and uh, I did not think it would take a lot. I did not think it would be a lot of fluid in that syringe, but it is an insulin syringe. If you've ever had to fill up an insulin syringe to administer to somebody, not the pre-filled ones, but you know, the old school ones, it is the same syringe. So it fills it up completely. I want to say it takes one full milliliter, very small, very small. And the amount of semen that you get in here is uh, half a milliliter. So it filled it up quite well. And what you're going to want to do after you've done all these steps is lay back, have your hips elevated. So I got a couple pillows and I got a blanket over the pillow because they do warn of spillage. And um, you want to go ahead and insert the uh, syringe into your vagina all the way to that hill, you know, where that plunger comes out. Um, so that the only thing that's really sticking out of your vagina is that plunger and enough for you to hold on to the syringe. And then go ahead and hit the plunger, make sure that all the semen is in. And what I did to make sure it's all in is I left it in and just kind of sat there for a moment. They also recommend that you do have an orgasm so that your cervix is able to tilt and dip into the full of semen that's now inside of you and really grab the sperm so that it can travel much easier, just like if you would be doing this naturally. Um, I hate to say naturally, but traditionally. Um, so after you have that orgasm, then go ahead and take it out. Because of, I did it that way, I did not have any spilling, and I double-checked the syringe, and there was no fluid left in it, so that was really, really great. Um, now, I will say that once you're done with that, you, my sperm bank recommended that I lay down for 15 minutes with my hips elevated, but my midwife had previously recommended that I lay down for 45 minutes with my hips elevated. So to err on the side of caution, I laid down for 45 minutes with my hips elevated 
And because I'm just extra and goofy and dramatic in real life, um, I put my legs up in the air, just like, you know, typical person. Um, and thankfully, because I knew I was going to be on here for a while, I had a movie playing in the background and I was FaceTiming my friends and just talking to them while this was all happening and they were super excited. Of course, I was not on the phone with them while I was using the syringe or any of that other stuff. Uh, we're close, but not that close. So there is that. Um, yeah, so once that 45 minutes was up, I just figured I'm going to call it an early night that night. So I ate dinner, you know, just really took it easy. I ate dinner and I just laid down and went to bed after that. Um, so yeah, that is all that I did for it. Hopefully this is helpful to you. Um, yeah, so now I'm just basically in my two week wait now. I will have more details about what all went on to get us to this point, like the ups, the downs, the shenanigans, because I, so many tears have been cried. So much has gone wrong before getting to this part. But in my life, so many things go wrong for a greater purpose. So I'm not even surprised at this point. Um, but hopefully what I went through is something that you will never go through. But hopefully if you do watch the video about what I went through, um, you'll get some lessons out of that so you can avoid what I've dealt with. Or if you've already gone through it or if you do go through it, then you know that you are very much not alone in this and you have somebody else who understands. So yeah, that is all I have for you guys this week. I'm so appreciative of you guys for tuning into this. We are officially in our two week wait, y'all. So keep up with me, hit that subscribe button, that notification bell, so that you can track along with this two week wait with me and prayerfully my pregnancy. And I will see you guys in our next